Hi, this is Emma Burford, and I'm thrilled to be sitting here with Carol Dodsley, the um, How To Girl and G Plus Plus mentor. Uh, hi there, Carol. Hi, Emma. I am thrilled to be here with you. <laughs> okay. Um, today we have a slightly different kind of uh, presentation. Carol has worked really hard on some slides that she's putting together for us. So we're going to be running through some Google Plus tips and tricks um, with Carol, and we'll be stopping throughout the presentation um, to pick up. I'm going to scoop up all the questions. So we're going to have a, a Q and A in the middle and a Q and A session at the end. So. Um, Please um, make a note of any questions you have and uh, either pop them into the webinar platform, webinar platform, um, or if you're watching us on Facebook on one of the pages, uh, you can pop the uh, questions into the comments box and I'll be watching those while we go through the presentation. So I'm going to hand over to Carol and uh, we'll catch up again soon. Hi, okay, right. So. I've been put on the spot to go straight over to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start my screen share. And for me, very unusual, you won't be seeing me all the way through because normally when I'm on a Hangout, I'm doing an interview or a broadcast style where you actually get to see me the whole time. Today, you are really lucky that you're not going to see me the whole time because we're doing a presentation style. This is a good way that pe some people ask, you know, can I use Hangouts for a webinar or is it just top and shoulders and we, we talk. So this is a good way to give you an example of how you can actually use Hangouts, not just to talk and just have your talking heads as they call them, but also to run a presentation. So I'm going to get started and go over to screen share. Now just to let you know, occasionally screen share can glitch. If I get stuck behind screen share, I might have to leave the Hangout and come back in again. If that happens, don't go away because Emma will still be there. So just so that people know about that, because sometimes it can happen. There's been a couple of glitches recently. They've been doing an awful lot of fantastic updates for us. So I'm going to go over to my screen share. And I'm Emma, if you can just tell me that my screen share is there. Yes, Carol, you're, you're live screen sharing. Thank you very much. Cool. Okay, so there's our welcome screen, but we're not going to stay on the welcome screen. Just for those people that don't know me and have never met me, I'm not going to sit here for the next 20 minutes talking about me because you really don't want to know all about me. You want to know how you can use Google Plus for your business. But I just want to let you know one of the things that I'm noticing, and it happens with every new social media platform, people dive in and they throw out courses and they tell you they're an expert. And sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. And I just wanted to sort of give you a little bit of a background so that you know why I'm actually qualified, or not qualified as in certificated, because there are no certifications, but why you should listen to me. As Emma's already said, I'm Carol Dodsley. I'm better known as the G Plus How To Girl. And I am a Google Plus specialist trainer, and I'm a proud author of the number one best selling book, A Divapreneur's Guide to G Plus, that is all about G Plus and hit the number one spot in Amazon in less than 24 hours and it has over 15 five-star reviews which is really really something to be proud of. I'm an inhabitant on G+, not a visitor and the reason I'm telling you that again lots of people pick up a new platform, go over, spend a day or two there learning all about it or they think they are and then they come and tell you how to use it but they're not actually living and breathing it they're not walking their talk in, in as much as always there testing things, researching, trying things out. And a lot of people, unfortunately, at the moment with Google+, Plus, are actually learning how to press the buttons, but then teaching people how to use it like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, the normal social media platforms that we are all used to. And Google Plus is actually a completely different platform, which I'm going to come to in a little while and explain to you why I'm saying it's completely different. And I actually live there. I didn't pop over, take a quick look, and then come away. I actually spend hours every day on Google Plus 
testing things out, keeping up to date, researching things, and seeing what works and what doesn't. I've been included in several of the top lists of the top 50 Google Pluses to watch. I'm featured in the Ultimate G Plus resource for 2013. I'm now a Google Plus rising star, and you will find me quite often in the Google Plus help community, which has almost 100,000 people in there who are new to Google Plus, asking questions, looking for help. You'll find me in there helping people out a lot. And I regularly receive presentation speaking and interview requests all about Google Plus. And I've also doubled my profits year on year for the last two years. So who's Google Plus for? It's actually for everybody, whether you're a solopreneur, whether you're a small business owner, whether you're a big brand. Absolutely everybody can utilize the platform and see results utilizing it. And that is the key. Can you see results? Yes, you can. You can raise your online visibility and get found in search using Google+. You can attract more leads and customers, and you can use some of the tools and features to save yourself time and money in your business. And you can do all of this whilst also increasing your profits. So the two big factors there is you can use Google+, Plus to save time and money, and to make more money. You can get closer to your customers with Google+, really build relevant relationships, and that, that word relevant is important. It's about relevant relationships, not just any relationships. It's about finding and talking to the right people. It's about using it as a lead generation tool, something a lot of people don't realize. You can actually use it to build your lists. Top global brands are on the platform. Last night, in fact, no, not last night, a little while ago, I actually saw the X Factor, American X Factor, using Google Hangouts. NASA have used Hangouts. President Obama uses Hangouts. There are so many high-level brands and organizations and celebrities using Google Plus and Hangouts. Local businesses, the benefits for local businesses on Google Plus are really, really high and entrepreneurs are using Google Plus and seeing great results because the playing field is pretty level if you use it the right way. Now, SEO and search is something that for a lot of people when they see those words, and I know for me it used to be, oh, don't talk to me about SEO and search, that is so boring. But this is really relevant to Google and Google Plus because when your customers or your potential customers are in a buying mode when they know what they are looking for, yes, they'll ask their friends, can you recommend such and such? But they will also go and search. And Google, that owns Google Plus, of course, this is in April 2013, in the United States had 86.3% and globally 88.8% .8 of the search market. That is big stats. That is why you need to take notice of Google and Google search because that is where people are going to find things. That's where your potential customers are looking when they are ready to buy. And it's all about nowadays, it's not just about, you may have heard people talking about keywords, do your keyword research, you need keywords everywhere, that's what people are looking for. It's not just about keywords anymore, it's about word of mouth and Google Plus helps you to get that word of mouth. Something a lot of people don't realize is that not everybody gets the same search results. There is no longer a page one Google for the world. There is a page one Google for each individual. And a lot of the search results now are being influenced by who you're connected to. When, you're in connect when you are connected and you're engaging with lots of people, you start to get seen. When influencers share your content, you get seen. It's all about raising that visibility through word of mouth, which is word of mouth online. And that's what you're doing when you're using Google+. You're raising the word of mouth and the visibility, the engagement and the connections. There's something called semantic search in SEO. SEO is the traditional way that people made their websites visible to people, their online content visible, and I've just spoken about keyword usage. Semantic search, which we're not going to go into in depth because it would take us all night. Semantic search is when it starts to look at your connections, the relationships, the amount of engagement that is happening, and relevance to the people that are searching. 
If you want to get seen on Google, excuse me, you need to be doing some work to get there. You can see here for, for the search term hangout training, I was actually, I don't know if I'm still there and I don't know if I'll be there for you. So far every time I've done a presentation I have still been there for people all over the world. Number one on page one of the Google search for hangout training which is not one of my keywords of course. And the great thing with that is that it's actually a YouTube video that is there which shows a picture of me. And on the next slide you can see I'm going to tell you how you get these pictures. Now YouTube obviously has a picture with a video but there's also something called authorship Google are really keen to stop all of the spammy websites they are very very keen to start delivering search results that you want to see that are relevant to you and that are high quality they are doing a lot of work to make this happen and it comes from verifying people as the content creators on their website. So if you have a blog or a website and you're creating content which at the end of the day is what Google presents to people when they're searching. They present content. Google goes around the world and they collect people's content from all different websites to present to people that are saying show me things about this. I want information on this. They're now asking you to verify that you are the content creator and you do that through Google authorship which again we're not going to go into step by step how you set it up. It's basically a code that you create your Google Plus profile, you then take a bit of code and you put it onto your website, onto the pages where you are creating content and you link it back to your Google Plus profile. Google checks it out and says yep those two match. We now know that when you create content on your blog, when you write a new blog post, some more new information, Google knows it has been created by you as the author. And the image below these um, bullet points, I did a search earlier for myself, which of course brings me up, but you can see first of all all the images that I've got up around the internet are being brought together more now and also that bottom little search bit where it says caroldodsley.com has a picture of me that has been picked up because I have verified my website using Google authorship and this is really important because when people are searching if you have this all linked up and you're the verified content creator that you've linked your website to your Google Plus and you write a new blog, you go and share it and when people find it online in search results they are more likely to start seeing a picture of you. And seeing a picture of somebody in search draws more eyes to that search result than seeing no pictures in search we're always more drawn by visuals than we are by text. And if I show you on the next screen here, this is a, a oops, I've just clicked the wrong button and saw Emma. And on here is another search result page and you can see here there's a video at the top with a picture of me and then the next one is a picture of me, a different website that this is being picked up because again I have verified my authorship on that website as well so it's picking up my picture it's picking up my information it's giving people information as well you can see it says how many Google circles I'm in so you can see it's linking back to my Google Plus and underneath is a text result if you had a whole page with those text results and then you saw a couple with pictures your face is more drawn to the pictures your eyes are more drawn to the pictures that's what happens with the people that are searching for you so by making these links and verifying yourself as the content provider you are more likely to show up in search with an image and people are more likely to click through on your results than they are on plain text results so you'll be showing up to the people that want to hear from you now I want to scrap some myths because these are the things that so many people are saying and I get it, I know why they're saying it, but they really are myths. Google Plus is another social network, I don't have time. I said it myself when Google Plus first started. Google Plus is not a social network, it's a social layer 
and it spans across a complete Google productivity suite of apps, platforms, and business tools. My response to that is always, I would say you cannot afford to not make time for it. Complete productivity suite in your hands. You can access everything Google and Google Plus from one login. It gives you more flexibility. It saves you time because you're not continuously logging into different platforms in different places. Anywhere you are, you can get to all the others with the click of a button. It's integrated working. I was actually sending somebody in my Gmail yesterday, I was sending somebody a video. And I'd got the video on my computer. I wanted to put it as an attachment to the Gmail, and it was too big. Now, normally, you would have to upload the video, and you would then have to go and share the link to wherever it is uploaded online to somebody for them to get it. Because if it's too big, they're gonna, you're going to have to host it somewhere. I'm in Gmail. Click Attach. It tells me, sorry, your video is too big. Would you like to share it through Google Drive? And immediately, Google Drive opened itself when I said yes uploaded the video and put it into the email for me. I didn't have to go to a separate platform to go and find it and share it. And you can take it all with you. If you use the Google integrated tools, a lot of people don't realize you can actually work with your calendar, with your Gmail, with your Google Drive, which is all your documents and everything. You can work with all of those offline as well as online and you can synchronize back. So if you ever lose your internet connection, which some of us do, or we go somewhere where we don't have connection, all of the stuff you're working on in your business, you can actually, if you've got it all set up properly, you can access it offline, carry on working, and when you get back online, it will all synchronize for you. That is another one of the big benefits of Google and Google+. Another myth. There's nobody there. Well, actually, they recently said that there's about a billion accounts on Google+. Now, there's not been any announcement made just yet. There will be very soon because they tend to make the announcements infrequently. But a billion accounts, and no, they're probably not all active. But there'll be an awful lot of those that are active. That's a lot of people. People say, but my friends aren't there. My friends are on Facebook. My friends are on Twitter. They're on LinkedIn. They're everywhere else. My friends are not on Google+. Your friends don't need to be on Google+, because Google+, is not Facebook. And it's not there to replace Facebook. It's another platform. It's a place where you should not be thinking, I have to take my friends. It's about meeting new people. It's about building new networks and deepening new relationships. And as we've already spoken about in terms of search, it's about being where people, your potential customers, are looking for you. It's not just about being where you're going to have a good old chat and catch up with people you already know. It's about finding new people. This is a graph. This is from something called Circle Count, which I'll show you the link on the next page. I went over to Google+. Plus. I didn't actually start on Google+, Plus the day it started. I dived into Google Plus the day they launched Hangouts on Air, which I will talk to you about in a few minutes. And this is just a graph. It's not right up to date. But you can see on April the 15th, 2013, I had just over 1,800 people had put me in a circle. I was there. I was engaging, talking to people, building relationships. And just a couple of months later, now April the 15th wasn't when I joined. I joined last year, and I started with about 200 people in circles. So I'd worked up to about 18, 1900 over the term of about six months, which is actually pretty quick in comparison to a lot of other social platforms. And then in June, look at that spike. Suddenly, because people were getting to know me, because they love the content I share, because it's valuable, and it's I'm engaging with people, I'm sharing other people's content, not just my own. I'm spending time talking to influencers who their followers want to know about the same topics, and I'm sharing their content because it's all about adding value, not just about throwing your own stuff out there. It's not about giving links to everybody. 
people recognize you they start to get to know you they want to know more about you they want to learn more from you and you can see here in June we had this big spike and it went up to nearly four and a half thousand in just a couple of weeks I'm now I think it's about six and a half thousand people have put me in a circle so you can see the reason I'm showing you this isn't to brag about how many people have me in circles because I'm very small in comparison to some of those that have 50 to 100 and even some have a million people that are following them why I'm sharing this is because it's about how fast you can create new relationships and meet new people and forge new deeper relationships when you use Google Plus this is circle count that I told you about where you can go and find out about people and you can see stats and on here at the top you can see it says 22 and a half million profiles have been indexed circle count do not belong to Google it's a separate entity and they have that many indexed and my profiles rank is actually 14,268 which in some places you go well that's not very good you know 14,000 people are ranked before you but out of 22 and a half million that's pretty good going and my profiles rank in the United Kingdom is 455 and my gender rank 104 so I'm almost in the top 100 people in the United Kingdom and again that is in a very short time this is the bit I want to get through a lot of people say I've been there I've tried it doesn't work if you put in the effort it does work and you do see results and when I say results it's not all about numbers by the way not all about numbers at all I'm just going to take a, a break for a quick drink and to go over to Emma and see if we've got any questions so far hi there Carol hi I'm back okay yes we do have some questions um, just pop over to the webinar platform and pick those up for you so um, we have a question um, from one of the guests asking if it would be possible to access the slides at all from your presentation um, so that's one of the questions that someone's wondering about um, so I don't know how you feel about that Carol um, what I will do is afterwards um, I've actually put one lot of slides up on SlideShare Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Presentation, and I was asked there, and I thought, well, I'll share it so that anybody can actually have them. So, what I will do, do remind me though, Emma, because yeah. I am really, really busy at the moment, but I will actually okay. get them and put them. I'll either put them on SlideShare or I will pass them to Emma as a PDF, and Emma yeah, can absolutely. I can email them out. That would be fantastic. So, yeah, I can share them. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Okay. Um, there's a question here um, which has somewhat been covered now, I believe, but somebody um, has asked on the webinar platform, I haven't actually put their name, but they've said, what's the difference between Google Plus and a Hangout? Now, I do believe we've probably answered that a little bit now, but um, um, I'm going to that. As I go further into the presentation, um, I've, I've given you the background about why and busted some of those myths told people the importance and how Google Plus can benefit you I'm gonna go in a little bit more in depth about the different areas on Google Plus as I finish off the presentation so that question will get answered as we go through the end of the presentation okay that's fantastic okay and another question here um, someone's asking um, they've looked into using it but they are finding it very difficult to use and wondered if you've got any suggestions I am going to come to that as well as I go through the rest of the presentation because yet yeah, a lot of people do Google Plus is not hard when you know how it's like anything in life once you know how it's pretty easy but it is so big and there is so much and there is so many different places you can go and there's so many different ways of using things that to begin with it can be quite overwhelming but I'm going to go through how you can actually make that easier as I finish the presentation because that's one of the things that I'm passionate about is helping people to get out of the overwhelm and the overload and actually make it a lot simpler for everyone brilliant okay Carol well that's fantastic and what I will be doing is because we're actually um, broadcasting live at the moment the actual live uh, replay is going to be up for some 
some days now. So some people will be coming back as it's Friday evening here in the UK. They'll be coming back and catching up with the replay over the weekend, perhaps. So um, on our uh, Facebook pages um, that some of you are watching on, we do have a comment section. So if you do have any questions later, you can um, pop the questions into the comment section there, and we'll scoop them up over the weekend as well. So, OK, Carol, I will hand back over to you for the second part of the presentation, which I have to say is fantastic. Um, really enjoying it. Um, some of you may have tuned in to our um, Hangout on uh, Wednesday when unfortunately I lost my internet connection. So Carol had to take the reins and just kind of go off the hoof on the presentation there. So really good today. So I'm going to hand back over to Carol and we'll listen in. Thank you. Okay, so I will go back to screen share. See you in a little while. Okay, if you can just confirm that the screen share is there, Emma, so that I know, oops, everybody can see it. Yeah, I'm giving you the thumbs up, Carol, so you might not have caught that, but um, it's perfect. Now, a good tip for people, if you're hosting or you're the other person on a Hangout when somebody is running a presentation, unless they have got their presentation open in a very small screen, they won't see anything you do in the Hangout because at the moment I'm now looking at my screen, not at the Hangout window. So thumbs up doesn't work. You have to use audio when somebody's presenting for them to see you. Thank you, Carol, because I didn't know that. So I've been giving you the thumbs up and then I'm muting myself and obviously chatting as well. So <laughs> that's great. Okay, then. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a look at things. Your Google Plus profile, which is your home. It's the same if you're on Facebook or anywhere else. You have a personal profile. One of the important things on Google Plus, and a lot of people say, well, should I start a profile or a page, or what do I, how do I get started? Start with a personal profile. Google Plus business pages are there, and they do work but they are very hard to get any traction if you are a small business that is not yet well known or a, an entrepreneur that you're starting out on the platform and you're not uh, already out there with thousands and thousands of people that know you. If you're not a big brand, it's very hard to get traction on a business page when you first start on Google+. And the great thing on Google+, Plus is people's personal profiles are being used for business networking. There is not right now any regulation or any rule on Google Plus that says you cannot business network on Google Plus. So on a personal profile. So you need to go over and start with a personal profile. That is the place that you are going to get to know people. It's the place you're going to build relationships, start sharing, and really get in there. And it's all about you. Yes. Your business is still about you, but it is about you as a person. One of the most important things on Google Plus is never ever set up a personal profile with a name that is not yours. If you do, you are risking your profile will get suspended, and they suspend profiles every single day if people go against the naming convention. Convention. Where did that word come from? The naming policies. You have to use a real name, not a business name. That is for your business page. On your personal profile, it should be your real name. If you have a real name that other people may not think is real, because obviously we're worldwide, we're global, and in some languages, real names don't always look real to other languages. If you have a name that potentially could be seen as not being real or they may think oh yeah somebody's you know playing a joke here you may have to send information in to Google to get them to accept your name happens in very rare cases but it can happen if you have a very unusual name or a name that doesn't sound like it is real always always though use your real name give your real information be yourself on the platform as well. I see so many people online, and this applies on any platform, setting up a profile and then starting to sort of talk and write like they think they should. It's not about how you think you should. It's about who are you. People want to know the real you, warts and all. You know, just be yourself. You'll feel much more comfortable 
you'll attract the people that actually want to get to know you, that resonate with your character. You know, I'm me wherever I am. And some people really dislike me. They just don't get me. They don't like the way I talk. They don't like the way I write. They want me to do things differently. And it's like, well, no, this is me. You get the real deal with me. I don't pretend anything. I am who I am. And that attracts other people, though, who absolutely love the way I am. And that is what you want in your business. Because you don't want to be attracting people that are attracted to someone you are pretending to be. And it's very easy to fall into that trap of trying to be what you think you should. But it always backfires and it is so much like hard work trying to keep it up. I've been there. I've done that when I used to be in high level senior management. And then I gave up because it was like, no, I, this is just too much like hard work. And when I started to be completely myself and confident in who I was and just talk, write and act me with no pretense or no trying to be what I thought other people expected me to be, life became so much simpler and so much nicer and I was so much happier as well and I started to attract the right customers rather than the wrong customers. Always do your personal profile images. Very, very important. Over on Google Plus there's a blue head if you don't put a profile image up and people are looking for real people. So make sure that your profile image is a profile image that where people can clearly see you. Unless you have a really strong reason why you cannot do that, show yourself. You wouldn't walk into a bar or a coffee shop or an office and turn your back on somebody as you said hello. You would look at them and you would introduce yourself face to face. It's the same online. Once you get there and you've set your profile up, start connecting and engaging with people. Don't go over there and do what a lot of people, sadly, who are coming from other platforms are doing. Don't go over and start spamming your links. And a lot of people don't realize this fine. They get excited and they want to share stuff and tell everybody about what I do. No. Start off by talking to people. The same way you would if you went to a business network offline. You wouldn't walk in, go and stand in the middle of the room and throw your business cards at everybody. You would actually start to talk to people and get to know them before you pass your business cards over. At least I hope you would. If you don't, then that's a tip for you for offline successful networking. Don't throw your business cards in people's faces until you get to know them a little bit more. Same online. Start connecting. Start going and looking at what other people are sharing. Start commenting on their posts and get into a discussion with them. If they're sharing interesting and relevant content that, is, that you enjoy and that you know your audience would enjoy, your potential customers would enjoy, share other people's content. This is the way you will start to actually get into more conversations, build better relationships and get noticed more. It's by going to give, not going to get. Don't post stuff out just thinking, oh, I want people to come and buy from me. Really take the time to build relationships and engage. It's so important. And you'll notice on Google Plus the conversations, they're not 140 characters like on Twitter. They're not people giving you the advice, don't post too much text. You know, on Facebook we can put, I think it's 5,000 characters or something. You can write like a, a mini blog on Facebook, but when you do, people tell you, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing that. On Google Plus, People are encouraging people to write a lot of stuff. You're being encouraged to sometimes write like a blog post. In fact, there are some people on Google Plus who have got rid of their blogs and they're blogging on Google Plus. I would never advocate that because you need your offline platform as well. But people are having in-depth conversations and you will see much longer posts on Google Plus than you see potentially anywhere else online. And that's because they are really getting into those conversations and really getting to know each other, having real discussions, which is so awesome when you get over there, when you see it. So that's your profile. The other big thing on your profile is your header image when you get over there. And I should have done a, a screenshot of it. I didn't do a screenshot of the header image, but your header image is actually massive. It's 2120 times, I think it's 1190, um, without looking and checking, I can't remember. Uh, I'll give Emma a link to a an article that I did as a guest post recently that shows you all the images and gives you all the sizes as well. That header image is very, very important that you create a good header image. You don't have to be a designer. 
the idea is people are seeing that and they want to know more about you so give them something give them pictures of you you can give them pictures of your professional side and your personal side remember it is your personal profile so there must be personal stuff not just business stuff so you've got your pro also optimize your profile I don't have time to go into every single bit of optimizing it but optimizing your profile is very very important because it, everything on Google Plus that is publicly available is indexed. And when it's indexed, it becomes searchable. So think about that when you're in there. Go into your About section on Google Plus, fill in all the details, and make it relevant to what you do, and also make it of interest to the people that are going to come over and take a look and think, mm, do I want to get to know this person or not? Tell them why they want to get to know you. Let them know who you are and what you do, both from a personal and a business perspective. Because people like to know a little bit more about people's personal side. I mean, I always talk about my dogs. And that attracts people because it's like, oh, she's somebody who loves dogs. has nothing to do with my business, unless the dogs happen to come onto a hangout with me, which they tend to do now and again. But it just tells people a little bit more about the type of person I am. And we like to know about the people and what they're like behind the business scenes. So think about that when you're on your personal profile. Don't try and make it all business networking. Put some personal stuff as well and really let people get to know you as a person. Google Circles, what are they? Circles are the equivalent, if you're on Facebook, of friends but they are different when you put somebody into a circle it's your way of saying I like what you share I want to see your information in my newsfeed when they put you in a circle they are saying I like what you share I want to see your information in my newsfeed but it's not a two-way thing it's a one-way relationship it can be two-way but whereas on, and I go back to Facebook because I know a lot of people at the moment are on Facebook and know Facebook very well. On Facebook, you ask someone to be your friend and they say yes and you're both friends and then you have this two-way relationship of their information in your newsfeed and your information in their newsfeed. We won't talk about the edge rank and how you see it at the moment because that would be a completely other conversation. On Google+, Plus, it's a one-way somebody circles you because they like your content they want to see it in their newsfeed if you like their content so if they're a like-minded person maybe they're one of the influencers in your niche and you want to see their stuff as well as them seeing your stuff maybe it's someone that you have a personal interest in the same topic or a arena and you want to see theirs and they want to see yours that's cool, you can circle back, but it's not this tit for tat, you circle me, I'll circle you. Because if you start doing that, your newsfeed starts to look a mess. Because if you're circling someone just because they circled you, but that person posts nothing of interest to you, you're going to clog up your newsfeed with a load of stuff that is of no relevance and no interest to you. So you're not really going to be making the most of seeing some great information and learning from other people on Google+. There's also something called What's Hot, which when you click the What's Hot button, you get a whole load of stuff of highly relevant, highly engaged with posts. If you have a ton of people in your circles who are sharing stuff that is of no interest to you, but they're getting a lot of engagement, for instance, maybe if I had somebody in my circles who loves cats. Now, I have nothing against cats, but I'm not a big cat lover. I'm more of a doggy person. If lots of people, which they do, are engaging on that other person's posts all about the cats, when I click what's hot, I'm going to get a whole load of stuff about cats. I'm not really interested in cats. So I need to think about who is in my circles because that also influences the what's hot and who is in your circles also influences search results. So you really want to be circling the people that you want relevant information from and the people that circle you are saying I want your information. So it really gives you control over what you see and you can view 
circles as an individual news feed as well. When you create a circle, you can give it any name you want. The people you've put into your circle may get told you've put them in a circle. But they won't know the name of the circle, so you don't have to worry about that. They will never see what you have called the circle or which of your circles they are in unless you share that circle. So for me, for instance, I have a circle called Daily Reading. I have put all of the influencers in my niche into that circle so that I every day can click on the Daily Reading circle and I am reading the posts from those people that are sharing information that I either want to reshare with my audience or people I want to learn from or people that I connect with and regularly talk with. So they're all in one circle. Then I might have a circle with people in that love dogs and we chat about the dogs. So that's another circle and I can view each of those as a news stream. So it's also important to try and organize your circles because they become individual news streams for you. It's a bit like having a filing cabinet. Put your files in, give each file a name and a folder name, put it in the right drawer so that when you want to find that information you know where you've put it really allows for integrated organization and sharing when you've got the circles right. Google Communities. Communities, again, I'll give you a, what are they like. They're like Facebook groups, but they are different, obviously. Google Communities are very, very tightly topic niched. There are some that aren't, obviously, but on the whole, the idea is this is about one specific topic. For instance, the Google Plus Help community that I'm in an awful lot answering people's questions, that is for people to go into to ask questions about Google Plus. If somebody comes in that community and asks a question about Google Drive, they are signposted to the Google Drive community. If someone comes in and asks a question about YouTube, they will probably get redirected or signposted to the YouTube community because each of them have their own communities. That doesn't mean people won't answer your questions in there. If they can, they'll give a quick answer. But communities are pretty tightly niched into a topic, which is great because if you're somebody who loves talking about your Nexus 4 phone, you will go into Google Plus and you'll find a community where people are doing nothing but talking about Nexus 4 phones. You can find communities where people are talking about science, real in-depth conversations going on. If you're very geeky, you'll find lots of techie and geeky communities on Google Plus. You'll find communities that are talking about knitting, talking about cooking, all sorts of things, but they're very, very tightly niched down, so it's really great way to find like-minded people and really share your interests. It's also the place for you to deepen relationships and if you're in business and you start your own community focused around your own business topic, you're going to be able to get to know people more that are going to potentially become your customers in the future and it's a great way to really find out what they want to know. Let them ask questions, you answer questions. When you first start out on Google+, Plus, I wouldn't rush in and start your own community though. I would go in and find other people's communities with that go to give mentality, go into the communities and start answering questions. Don't tell anybody what you do, don't try and push your links at them or anything like that, just go get to know people, and actually answer their questions and it's a very good way for you to find out what your potential audience want. So it's a good way to do research. The questions they're asking, the things they're sharing, the things they're looking for. Those are all things that you can pick up as research to think, right, aha, people in this niche are asking all these, I'm seeing loads of questions all about this topic. People want to know about this cool, I can go and create a product about that because that's my topic area, I know what I'm talking about and I can see that lots of people are actually looking for it. So you can not only build relationships, you can not only let people know you know what you're doing because you're answering their questions so they're likely to come and circle you, but you can also do your research using communities. When you've been there a while and you think you're ready to start your own community, you can and you can have it private or public. The choice is yours. I use a lot of private communities for my paid for membership sites so that people have an exclusive community to come over to and actually ask me questions and network and learn more and they're private. Public communities 
about your topic and the good thing with public communities, again, everything that is posted in a public community is indexable. So you're also increasing your search results and your visibility in search by being in public communities. And now we're on to my favorite, Google Hangouts. And this is where we'll get to answer the question that came in, Google Hangouts. What are they? Google Hangouts are private text chats. They are private video calls, so you can video chat with other people completely privately, a little bit like those of you that use Skype, like a Skype video call. And they are live public broadcasts, which is what Emma and I are doing tonight. Private text chats, you can have up to 100 people in a private text chat, so a private text hangout. The wording gets a little bit confusing with it, but I, that's why I call it a private text chat. 100 people. From that text chat, inside the window that you're in when you're text chatting, there is a video icon and you can actually go straight into a video chat from your text chat. Now you can't have 100 people in that private video chat. You can have up to 10 including yourself. But you could be in the text chat, people can hop into the private video chat and the rest of the people could still be text chatting. You can do one-on-one -on -one private video chats with your clients, with your potential clients. This is where you start really saving time and money. If you're used to traveling around the country, actually asking about, um, not asking, but meeting potential clients, that costs you a lot of time and a lot of money. And sometimes the client doesn't become a customer. So you have to build the cost of that travel, the cost of the time into your pricing. You can save those costs by meeting your potential clients initially on a video chat. They can be anywhere in the world. That is a massive time saving. You can have private management meetings. I know there's a lot of organizations where they have team members all over the country and some even all over the world and they're traveling on a regular basis to meet up. Now I'm not saying that you should stop doing that, but you can meet up in real time live on air through a video chat privately so it's completely confidential and you can integrate Google Docs with a hangout so people could be on a hangout you I know when I was in senior management we had meetings where we went through strategy papers and we all made our edits and each person was making their own edits and then they gave it to the secretary who had to go off and add all the edited bits in and change everything and then send it all out by email or snail mail for everybody to go over again and then it would go back with the edits. It was a lot of back and forwards. With Google Hangouts, you can be in a video call chatting with each other. You can open your Google document. You can all look at it live on your own computers. You can all edit it live see what each other is editing. When it is saved back to the original folder on Google Docs, it is saved with all the edits done. Imagine the cost and time savings for a business that that can do. I'm just, I've, my eye has just been caught by Emma is typing in some questions inside the Hangout. Let me just stop and see what this is flashing up. Okay, we'll come to those questions. We'll, I'll come back to those questions because they're all in different things. and um, We'll come back to those in a little while. But I'm going to address one of those. Somebody has asked, is there a reason why we are not using Google Hangouts on air? This is a Google Hangout on air. We are streaming it through different places, but we are on a Google Hangout on air, which is the live public broadcasts. And I'm going to show you some pictures of different places that you can do your live public broadcasts. I'm going to tell you first though what you can use them for. I've just spoken about your potential clients. You can use them to build your networks. When you're on Google Plus you can hop into a hangout. There's lots of them going on where people are just hopping into a hangout for a chat to get to know people. Google Plus themselves offer hangouts where if you're a newbie you can hop in and ask Google community managers questions. You'll also find the Google Rising Stars and the Google Top Contributors in there, people like myself who are there to answer questions as well and just help you feel comfortable on the Google platform. 
You can use them to deepen relationships. If you've been talking to people in a community or through your profile, or maybe you've had a few text chats, and you say, hey, let's hop onto a video. Let's, let's really talk to each other and see what we, what we really look like in real life. So you can deepen those relationships by having a private text chat. Live Hangouts on Air is where you start to showcase yourself and your business. And like I say, tonight or this morning, whatever time of day it is for you, wherever you are in the world watching this, this is a live Hangout on Air. If you came on and you haven't yet seen me or Emma personally, you're going to see us hang on with us because when I finish going through the slides, we'll both be back on live face to face and you, you will see us presenting. They save you time and money. Not only what I've already spoken about, how you can save time and money with private chats, but broadcasting. Imagine that you're going out there and you're broadcasting, you're doing a webinar or you're doing an interview series. Especially with the webinars, you don't have to pay for Hangouts. There are other platforms that I'm not going to mention that you have to pay according to how many people are watching your webinars and it starts at somewhere around $99 a month for I think it's a hundred people can watch your webinars and it goes up to somewhere around 500 for a thousand people to watch your webinars. Google Hangouts on Air can be watched by an unlimited audience from anywhere in the world on any device that has internet and YouTube access because they can be streamed live through YouTube. So you have no limits and they are free, so you save time and money with them. You're collaborating in real time, and what to me is so important is they're bringing the world closer to each other, really opening up communication. And this is where we're going to answer, this is probably going to answer other people's questions. Where's your audience? The picture you can see here, that was me doing a Hangout on Air, on Google Plus, on a Google Plus event. So on a Google event, you can live stream your Hangout on Air. So anybody that's over on Google, they don't have to download any software, they just have to go to the page and play the video, which is actually the live stream at the time. This is a bit of a goofy picture of me on a Hangout on YouTube people can go to YouTube and that is really important because smartphone users can't always see videos on other platforms. They can't see a video through a Google event but they can see it through YouTube. So you can share your YouTube link and a smartphone user can be watching your live Hangout on Air from anywhere where they have their smartphone. This is very similar to where a lot of you are watching tonight. That is a Hangout on Air using Webinar Express, which is a WordPress plugin, which gives you a very much feel of a webinar, so that you feel that you're going into a webinar, the traditional webinar that a lot of people are used to. You can have registration pages for people to sign up to the, uh, to the webinar, and you can send out emails, link it to building your list, very easy to do. You, you have there's several plugins. I'm not going to mention names here because there are several plugins and several different ways of doing it. Um, but you can have it on your website to look and feel like a webinar, but actually you're presenting live. This was on Facebook, and again, some of you are watching us on Facebook. Your your screen will look different to this particular one. This was a Facebook page where I was actually there being interviewed. You can see you've got the Facebook comments and we could even include a join us today button on the Facebook page so we can go to our audience wherever our audience is. This is a screenshot, I don't have that page anymore, but this is actually one of my websites where we stream the Google Plus Girls TV every Monday. We've got a slightly different design now, but that is the Google Hangout on Air embedded in a web page with an opt-in form, which is very important for you as a business, and underneath, not only Google comments, but also Facebook comments, and live tweets are over there as well. So that's a way to, to also get it out to your audience through your own website. Increase website traffic, because the longer somebody stays on your website, the better your stats are, the more likely they are to come back, 
and you are streaming live, talking to them live, but at the end of your presentation, if you don't want to take it down, you can just leave everything and the replay is there. That's another great thing about Google Hangouts. You don't have to record them yourself, edit your video, download it, sort it out, and then upload it somewhere to be able to stream it back and send out recordings. You can, can if you want to, send people to exactly where they went when you were live and just do nothing and the replay will be there. You can also, because these are recorded by YouTube, you can turn the recording private so that nobody can view it afterwards. You can make it unlisted so only people with a link can view it afterwards. Or you can leave it there for the public to watch and you can optimize your video and get yourself out in search. And I showed you a picture earlier of one of my YouTube videos showing up on page one of search. So there's lots of different ways that you can go when you've finished your Hangouts, as well as lots of different places that you can offer a live stream of your Hangouts. And you don't have to do it on all you can choose. Where do you want your audience to go? Or ask yourself, where are my audience? Where is the best place for me to stream my Hangout on air? So where do you start? So much. I mean, I've whistled, stopped, toured through loads and loads of stuff. I would love to be able to give you much more information, but I have to watch the time, and I know people are busy. So I've tried to just give you as much information at an overview level as I can to really get you thinking about Google+, Plus, the benefits, how it can really help your business, and all the different options and features that are there, because there's so much for people. The first thing I would say is dive in and create a profile. But what I see a lot of people doing is they do dive in and create a profile, then they start trying to build circles and they go around circling people all over the place and they're then sharing information to those circles and nobody's seeing it and nobody's engaging with them and they're getting overwhelmed and they get frustrated and they give up thinking this just doesn't work for me. I don't have time to work this all out. What I want to say to you is it doesn't have to be like that because I've got an invitation for you. I want to help you discover real gems that are going to save you time and money as you position yourself as an authority and really raise your visibility and start sharing your messages with the world in the right way to see results, to get more customers to your business and to create and position yourself with authority online and be found in search. And I want to help you do that in easy what I've put together is easy, it's affordable, and it's results-driven training for you if you are a, and even if you're not, but especially for time-strapped entrepreneurs, because I know that you're really busy, and it is really hard to get the time to go and learn about something. So I've created All Things G+, Easy, Effective G+, Marketing Membership, and it's the place where you're going to learn the tools and features of G+, and Google because I've already spoken to you about that all seamlessly integrated and I'm going to give you things that you can pick up and put into action but not things that are going to overwhelm you. I'm going to include strategies not just how to press the buttons but also tell you why you want to use each tool or feature so that you can decide which tool or feature is actually going to give you benefit. It's not me saying to you you must do this you have to set this up. You have to do it this way. I will be showing you how to do things, giving you step by step what buttons to press, but also telling you why and the benefits and how it can help your business, your clients, and you. Just imagine, rather than having a program where you buy into the program and you then have all these videos that are there and you've got to go through them all and you start to feel really overwhelmed and by the time you get to the last video all the screens have changed because somebody's done an update on a platform which we know on social media we get updates on platforms just about every day not quite but it's always updating and it is very frustrating if you have a program with all these pre-made videos that when you're going through the videos the screens don't quite look right Imagine if you could spend just 20 minutes a week to learn a new tool or a new feature that you can pick up and use right now, that it's in quick, easy, step-by-step -step modules with no fluff, but they're always up to date. That's what All Things G Plus is going to have for you. 
Imagine having live hangouts every month, a live hangout where you can hop in to the video call and ask your questions live and get answers. That is part of All Things G+. And an exclusive Google All Things G+, members community that is a private community. So people are going to get a new module every month. This is step by step. It's not a big program that is sitting there that's going to overwhelm you, that's going to be out of date before you get to the end. Every month I create you a new module with a maximum of four 20 minute videos teaching you something new. Some of them will be shorter because some features you don't need that much. Others where I want to go more in depth and really give you deeper information will have a maximum of four 20 minute videos so you can pick up one a week or you can spend 80 minutes a month on that, you'll be able to pick it up, you'll have step-by-step -step instructions, you'll know why it is, what the tool can do for you, and you'll be able to put it into action. Then you can relax, you can go away, you can carry on with your business without feeling overwhelmed. If you have questions, you can come into the community because it will be open for everybody, and you will find me in there quite often. I'm not one of these people who open, opens up a community and you never see me. I go into my communities and I'm there to answer your questions. And once a month, I will have open office hours where you will be able to come along. It's not a webinar where I'm presenting at you. It's an open office hangout where you can come into the hangout and ask me your questions. If you're not available at the time that the hangouts are being run, you can ask your questions in the community and I will pick those up and still answer them because those Hangouts will be recorded for people to be able to watch back if they can't actually make them. So all of that is in All Things G+. High value, affordable, and making it easy access for absolutely everybody. I want to remove all the barriers and all the reasons that you would be saying no to yourself. Make it that there's no overwhelm and that it's flexible training for you with short, easy to learn tools and features. And it's also incredibly low cost, but high value because everything I do is high value. And I'm going to go over to Emma to see if she wants to ask me any questions, either about the Hi there, Carol. Hi there. I've unmuted myself. And I'm exhausted listening, but it's fantastic uh, content, Carol. Really, really good. I'll put myself on screen there. Yeah, fantastic, Carol. Yeah, you deserve that glass of water. In fact, it should probably be something stronger. But unlike Wednesday, I I'm amazed you haven't got your can of Coke under the table. But <laughs> You're not supposed yeah. to tell people that I'm normally drinking cans of Coke. No, I... I got I, some I, tea. I guess, actually. It's quite yeah. refreshing. Water with apple cider vinegar. It's very good for you. Ooh, yeah, that sounds very cleansing. So, yeah. No, lots of talking there. You've absolutely jammed that hour completely full of fantastic tips, um, really good things in there. Um, in fact, I want to share with everyone just a few things. We had a, a webinar on uh, Wednesday, Hangout, live Hangout, that we were streaming through my website. And it, it did go a bit techy because I had some issues with my internet connection and some of you on the call probably were aware of that but um, after the event we had some great um, feedback um, from some people that were listening in and I'm just reading off my screen now so that's why I'm looking down now but great webinar with you Carol on Google Plus really helpful and uh, just watch the replay and going to be putting all the tips into practice um, thanks for a brilliant Google Plus webinar, um, answered lots of my questions and that's from Sue and uh, someone else is saying that they managed to watch the broadcast tonight, in fact uh, that was after the event and that they're off now looking at Google Plus now, have lots of ideas from Roz um, and another person Fiona is saying she had found lots of things that she was doing wrong so <laughs> thank you so much for that and I know tonight you've, you've covered an awful lot of ground and lots of new other ideas as well so really good stuff. We've got um, a couple, uh, one more question um, where we have uh, someone saying do you have any tips to what to include in your profile cover photo and I think you that's something you kind of uh, covered didn't you Carol earlier. We've got a lot, uh, and I can see some questions as well that I want to, to answer, and I'm quite happy to stay here answering some questions. What I did want to do is, because obviously 
I've just shared how people can go further with me and the benefits of joining the All Things Plus program, but obviously you need to tell people how they can do that because there wasn't a link on the slides because okay. I'm not sending them through my own website, you're sending them yeah, um, up. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. No, um, people watching on the website will be able to look down and click on the join now and sign up to your um, membership for all things G+, which is popping up on your screen. And I will be adding the link to the live and the recorded replays on Facebook as well. And there'll be a button there where people can access, just click straight through to Carol's website. So nice and easy for you. And I'll be following up, obviously, with emails and Carol's fantastic PDF with the slides. So we'll add the link in there. So yes, thank you for the reminder, Carol. I'm looking at the questions. It's so exciting, but um, I think uh, we probably have co covered most of the questions now. So um, I'm just having a quick look now in Facebook, which um, there may be a couple more. Right. There's, there's, what, there's one question. There's a couple of questions here that you. Okay. Can, if you just pop over to the chat so that you can see where I'm looking. Yes, I can um, see where you're looking. And. There's a question there, what if I don't have any content to offer or share? You always have content. If you're in business, you know your business. You know the questions that people are asking about your business. You know what will add value. But it's not always about you creating content. Go and find the people that you want to learn from. Go and find people that are sharing information. You know, I find people that find websites and information about a whole host of stuff that I haven't seen and they're in one of my circles because I sort of use them as my newspaper so I will go and find their stuff and I will share their stuff with my audience because it is relevant and it will add value and it's a mixture of create, curating other people's content and sharing your own if all you do is share your own stuff people are going to get pretty bored with you because it's like oh god all they're doing is pumping out stuff at me all the time Go and find other people's and share that. Get into the conversation and share that. Go into the communities and answer people's questions and find out what they want to know about to get ideas about content for you to create as well. We've also got, do you have any tips what to include on your profile cover photo? Okay, um, tips for your profile cover photo. I have already said it is absolutely massive, so you need a big picture. And I just happen to have now, mine is not perfect by any capture of imagination, but let me share mine with you that will potentially give you some ideas. Can you see my cover image there, Emma? Yes, Carol, I can. Sorry, I'd muted myself again. Just. Uh to block out any background noise here so yeah it's looking really good in fact I love your cover shot because it shows how many people that you've connected with over the last year so that is uh, a great one so yeah, yeah. And, and the point with your cover image because it is so big you have a lot of room and you know on here I've put on the left hand side is my business side my book, one of my programs, all the people that I've done expert interviews with and on the right hand side I have put a big picture of me sitting there um, saying hi great to meet you with a big smile on my face that I hope attracts people and they go oh this girl looks quite nice, she looks quite friendly, looks like she's got some interesting stuff going on and then as you scroll down it tells people that I'm a trainer, best-selling author so they're getting a little bit more about my business side and yes they can see the number of people that have me in circles and my profile image which is the little round circle bit you can see there I've included my dogs but I've made sure people can see me very clearly because that's what follows me around Google Plus so you don't have to be a professional designer you can pick up pictures of anything you're doing in your business or in your personal life that you want to share of course there are some default pictures that Google Plus offers you if you want to use some of theirs now and again just before my birthday because I'm a Leo um, they had this great landscape with this big lion in the middle and I used that for a few weeks because it sort of related to who I was so you don't have to 
always have the same one. You don't have to create your own. You can use ones that Google offers. Some of the great photographers that are on Google, there's a lot of photographers on Google, some of those have actually donate not donated, but they have made available images that Google can offer you to use on your cover image as well. It's relevance. Think relevance. And there is no 20% text limitation on a cover image on Google Plus either. So you can have as much text or as many images as you want. That's fantastic, Carol. You're right there. No text. <laughs> or lots of text and lots of pictures, whichever you like. So um, that's brilliant. OK, um, I've cleared now most of the questions, actually, Carol. So I think we really are kind of at the end of the session at the moment. But as I said at the beginning, if, if people are watching on Facebook um, over the weekend or they're catching the replay, um, what they need to do is, is post questions to us. And uh, the, the buttons for Carol's offer, um, where we can find a fantastic price for her offer, which, again, is Carol. Oh, yes, I didn't tell anybody the price, did I? <laughs> so I haven't shared how much it is. Oh, gosh, thank you for the reminder. Right now, anybody that clicks on that button can go over and join me for just $19 a month. And that's 19 one nine. And I am not going to guarantee that that is going to be there forever because it is a ridiculously low price. But I wanted to make it a complete no-brainer for people. I know that sometimes it can be quite hard and quite challenging to invest in another program or start to learn another platform. And I just wanted to take all of those objections away for people and make it really, really simple for people to join me because I am so passionate and I'm such a Google Plus advocate and really want to get it out there to people because I know the benefits. So right now, it's $19 a month. And if the price goes up, or I should say when the price goes up, because at some stage it will go up, you will be locked in at that price. So anyone that joins me now, that price stays even if the price went up to $97 a month, which people are telling me it should be a minimum of that, which is nowhere near that at the moment. But even if it does go up to that price, $19 for anyone that joins at the $19 price, you will stay at that price as long as you remain a member. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, definitely a, a, a great price, Carol, because I'm a member of a couple of different groups and I certainly pay more than $19. So <laughs> that's, uh, you know, for your expertise. And I know from the um, Google Plus Hangout Success course that I'm a member of, you know, you really do over deliver. So thank you so much once again for joining us again tonight for our second live event. Um, I'm sure lots of people um, send in some questions over the weekend. A lot of uh, my contacts uh, are well, some of them are definitely out this evening. So we'll be touching base with you again, Carol. And I'd just like to say thank you. So good night, Carol. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for asking me to come along and share lots of great information with your peeps. Bye, everyone. Bye.